today we will uh, briefly touch upon some basic issues in discrete probability. Our aim is to have again some basic idea about what is known as information because by now we know that information plays a central role in the understanding of the design and development of a digital communication system. We have already encountered some information source, information sync and some information signal process, information processing blocks such as source coders, channel coders. So towards that, let me start with uh, what is known as a probabilistic model or a statistical model. Now, a statistical model essentially is an experiment as you can see with an outcome or several outcomes, but with an outcome chosen from a set of k possibilities. By outcome, we loosely mean the results or outputs of the experiment, okay. And there may be various kinds of results possible. Then we define a sample space, a sample space in any discrete probabilistic experiment means the full set of all the possible alternatives as outcomes. That means it is the set of all possible results that are possible from a statistical experiment. Then the alternatives which are nothing but valid outcomes they are also known as elements of the sample space. You will find little bit of variations in different texts really, but the idea must be understood. So, we can say that the sample space is a set of all alternatives which are possible outcomes, okay. Then comes the notion of ensemble. In our discussion, we will indicate an ensemble by a capital letter like U, X, Y, A, B like that. Ensemble is nothing but the sample space and the associated probability measures of all the possible alternatives, okay. So, if I try to describe an ensemble related to a statistical experiment, what I should specify are the possible alternatives as outcomes of that experiment along with the probability of occurrence of each outcome, okay. So, when I complete this, I describe an ensemble, okay. Please note that <coughs> for our cases, the value of k will be finite, okay, and the probability values will exclude the specific value of 0. That means, if in our a discussion, we have a situation that we know that particular outcome is not at all going to happen, okay, that is its probability is 0, we will not consider it in our discussion, okay, because ultimately we are trying to relate these ideas with something practical over there, okay. The value of 1, yes, it is notionally included, but we will see that uh, the, that situation is very simple and if I know that a particular outcome is always to occur. That means that there is no other outcome possible really. The probability values for all other outcomes are 0 and hence they are to be excluded, okay. That is not the case perhaps we are going to encounter again. Now, you may wonder where and how we should apply this uh, basic concepts and ideas of discrete probability. There should be many occasions, we will touch upon only one or two, but it is up to your imagination. You should be able to define various kinds of statistical experiments either in a singular form or in a joint experiment form really and this approach leads to very strong basis of understanding as well as analytical modeling whenever it comes to that, okay. As a simple example, let me consider this known block of information source. You remember this is the first block really at the output of which we usually get a discrete time, discrete amplitude signal, but we have started talking, I mean mentioning that output also as some kind of information, okay. So, at the output of this information source, if I can, I would like to try the basics of discrete probability theory, okay. Now, 
imagine some information source okay like say to give you some idea that the information source is giving us outputs one letter after another okay taken from an english text a text has been written in english okay so there are various letters chosen from english alphabet okay and then as if the letters are appearing at the output of this information source in its corresponding digital form of course okay each letter has been represented by a group of bits or by one symbol okay and i'm talking about that basically i'm giving the example of an english alphabet simply because the alphabet size is finite we have fixed number of letters punctuations etc okay so if i say that each letter as if is available here at a time one at a time then i can easily visualize that i can construct an in a discrete sample space even the sample space here i am indicating by these braces as if there are letters okay x1 x2 etc up to x capital k fine incidentally in information theory and discrete probability also this set these individual elements or alternatives are also known as letters okay just to give a quick idea that okay if i am considering an any kind of text okay as if this outcome corresponds to a letter and this set of letters is also called an alphabet okay these are alternative names really so this sample space i can i also say as the alphabet of letters x1 x2 up to x capital k only finite number of possibilities okay then again if i think about an english text being put in a digital form in the form of information i can say that if these are the letters in an alphabet then is it likely that all these letters come with equal probability no isn't it we know that okay certain letters are more probable than others etc so it is possible to assign some kind of probability of occurrence with each letter in this alphabet okay let me write that these are also called letters these are additional names and this whole set is called alphabet so for the sake of modeling and understanding if i go on observing the outputs in the form of letters i can find out how many a's are occurring over a large period of observation period of observation essentially is a very important parameter in um, in in the, st uh, the study of statistical experiments especially when we try to apply the theory to a practical situation so after some study over a sufficient uh, period of time i can perhaps come out with a probability p1 that the letter x1 will occur similarly for all letters i can assign a probability value and this complete description then means an ensemble okay so note that for this specific and uh, example perhaps we could we can construct an ensemble rather easily but if you think a little bit open i mean you may agree that okay there may be situations where it may not be possible to define the ensemble exactly because the probability values may change okay in general when we design a system we come out with an information source which is rather general as much as possible so that it does it works more or less equally well for any kind of any given kind of data really okay so so uh, wherever possible if we define an ensemble or if we just closely or approximately define an ensemble then we can make use of this discrete probability theory and can come up with some other expressions of information etc the ensemble is noted as i said by some capital letter so i'm indicating x by this ensemble okay so the summary is that the information source if it is transmitting some text letters then we can define an ensemble around that okay if i extend this not only for text really even for speech signal when the speech signal has been <coughs> digitized has been uh, sampled and uh, has been quantized appropriately uh, we know and we'll also see a little bit more later on that each sample <coughs> is can be represented by group of bits like one popular standard is to represent each sample by a group of 8 bits okay 8 bit pcm system they call it speech signal is sampled at the rate of 8 kilo samples per second okay and each sample is indicated by a group of 8 bits so that we get an overall coded bit rate of 64 kilo bits per second 
or 8 kilo samples per second equivalent description. Okay. So, even for speech signal it is possible more or less fairly well to come out with an ensemble where there may be it is again up to your choice really there may be say 256 letters in that alphabet where capital K is 256 okay. and we may consider each sample to be one letter in the alphabet. Okay. But this choice also is not rigid you can if you like for some other reason like to visualize 4 bits in a group of 8 bits as one sample you can do that also that is up to you depending on the convenience that is done. But one popular practice is to see one sample at a time that is a group of 8 bits. Okay. So, this is one example and we can extend the ideas really when you learn a little bit about what is known as a joint statistical experiment. Now, can you tell me what is a joint statistical experiment or a joint probabilistic model just by using your common sense? Joint statistical experiment or joint probabilistic model. Two different events in the same sample space. Okay, is that a requirement uh, for defining a joint experiment? So uh, uh, I was asking because I uh, I know I mean you have undergone a course on uh, probability theory, isn't it? Okay, these joint experiments have been taught there. Okay, then you should have come up with a better answer because uh, you have added a very important uh, term there called as event. In fact, I did not mention about event so far really. I talked about the outcomes as the results of an experiment, is not it? Event is something which need not be equal to an outcome really. Okay, event is something which uh, should be defined uh, as per your choice really, the way you would like to define. Okay, uh, so let me try in my way briefly. Okay, if you have uh, for your convenience again, for your visualization again, because you would like to study and understand if, uh, some systems or subsystems. So, you may like to say that okay, there are as if two independent, stati two statistical experiments, independent or dependent that will be seen later on, two or more number of statistical experiments occurring. Okay. Now, in this again let me tell you that first any statistical experiment to occur, it is not necessary that you will get the outcomes or the results one after another in time it is not necessary. One can define a statistical experiment irrespective of any time dimension in that way. Okay. But in some our examples like the example I gave of information source, there is a notion of time indirectly, but we need not talk about that, that really unless it is necessary. Okay. So, think freely really and if you can imagine more than one statistical experiments, okay, if you can identify them in your way really, then you would like to define the whole thing together as some kind of joint experiment, joint statistical experiment. It is up to your choice still. Okay. So, for example, if you have an information source here okay, and then we know as per our previous block diagram what should follow this block is some kind of source coder is not it, coder. Now, it was possible to define an ensemble here. Now, similarly, can I define an ensemble here as well? <coughs> yes, okay, fine. So, I can define an ensemble here. Let me say this is ensemble Y. Now, it is for your convenience, you would like to design this first, okay, and then you would like to design this separately. But maybe the third person would like to consider this whole thing together, okay, and would like to consider this input and this probabilities for designing this output in a desired manner. <coughs> okay. For example, in this first example, I did not worry about the initial probability here at the input. In fact, there was no input to the source required really. I did not show that explicitly, but I was interested in the definition of ensemble at its output. Similarly, without bothering about the input probability, I could define an ensemble here, but if I am interested in finding an experiment which is happening around both the blocks really where there is one ensemble at the output of this and I can define another ensemble then a natural question is uh, as an engineer I would like to investigate is there any dependence of the output probability of this outputs here okay, on these probabilities here is a natural question is not it. Okay. So, in such cases you can see that 
I can see there are there, as if there are two statistical experiments taking place. Okay, and if I now consider this as the final output, okay, the final output is not only dictated by this letter, but its associated probabilities as well. Really, this is one trivial example. I can go even further. Okay, there is a channel encoder, isn't it? Okay, let me bypass that for the time being. Really, it's not necessary. Really, there is another channel encoder does not introduce uncertainty. If you remember, it does not introduce. There is another block which introduces uncertainty ahead of that is the channel discrete channel is not it. So, I am making the channel encoder block as something transparent which in terms of uncertainty as if it does not uh, increase uncertainty. Okay. Now, let me consider this example of a discrete channel. Now, we know that there may be some probability distribution of the letters that you are feeding to the channel, okay? but the probability distribution may get changed because of all kinds of uncertainties in the discrete channel. Okay? So, though we may be looking for the same set of symbols at the output, but the probability assignments may be different. Okay? So, it is interesting to talk about the outputs here and relate it, the outputs to all the intermediate outputs and finally to these inputs because our ultimate go goal is to transfer the letters which I am getting here at this source out source code source information source output through the channel is it not. So, for many such purposes it may be necessary to visualize and conceptualize I mean more number of statistical experiments together okay? and that is a perfect ground for defining what or conceptualizing what is known as a joint experiment. Okay. And it is not very difficult also, one can simply extend the idea of a single experiment or can start with a basic idea of a joint experiment, joint statistical experiment. So, that th this case simpler case of a single statistical experiment can be viewed as an special case of a joint experiment. Do you agree? My point is that in practice you an idea of a joint experiment is very useful. Okay. And one that may be a starting approach really and a single experiment can be viewed as a special case of the joint experiment where I will say the second experiment or the first experiment is as if something certain with its output probability being one kind of thing we will see that. Okay. So, that there is essentially one experiment, but still I can start calling it as a joint experiment of two ensembles etcetera. This is mostly a question of visualization. Okay. <coughs> So, just to give you a very uh, uh, intuitive idea really, let me say that as if there are two experiments, number 1, number 2. Now, you should tell me sir, how are you defining this as experiment number 1 and how are you calling this as an experiment number 2. I have no other answer, but to say that okay, this is for my visualization. Okay. Now, it may so happen that this first experiment has some outcome, okay. some outcome that means some possible result and the second experiment has got another possible outcome. That is again something to show that okay, the outcome of the second experiment if it follows the first experiment. And if it is influenced by the outcome of the first experiment, then some kind of overlapping perhaps should be indicated. That is all. Okay. This by this overlapping, I simply want to convey to you. Okay. This is not a very rigid description, let me tell you. Okay. But this is just for understanding quickly that if the overall experiment is such that the outcome of one part of the experiment, which I am calling as the first experiment, influences the outcome of the second experiment, then I should not have shown the two experiments like this in an isolated fashion. Okay. So, if I should not show in general two experiments as totally isolated, the other way is that show some amount of overlapping and that is what I am showing. Sir, but yeah. even if they are dependent. Even if they are dependent. It is totally possible that sample space are independent. Pardon? So, even if the two experiments are dependent, yeah. it is still totally possible hmm. that the sample spaces are independent. So, in that case, there will be no overlapping. The sample space may be independent, but the joint the joint ensemble cannot be independent. 
so whenever you talk about the probability, the probability of occurrence of, for example, again for simplicity, if I assume that the outcome of first experiment, it does influence the outcome of second experiment, okay. And as if the two experiments are such that the first experiment occurs once, okay, and then depending on the result, the second experiment starts and this result affects the second experiment and you get the first output from the second experiment, if it happens like that. Again coming back to our previous example, it happens like that. In our example of communication system, it happens like that only. We get an information output here, okay. Say uh, AI is one possible outcome. I have got this AI goes to the source coder and I get something here. Let me call it as BI, okay. That means AI is generated with some probability of course, but when AI is generated, source coder generates BI. Okay, easier to follow perhaps. In that case, if I call this as first experiment, this as second experiment, we can see that the outcome of the first experiment influences the outcome of the corresponding outcome of the second experiment. Isn't it? Okay. Having different sample spaces, say AI to now, K1 to K. the way I was visualizing, I was defining a sample space for this experiment. Similarly, I could define a sample space for this, okay, looking at the output, okay, I could call it as B okay with b1 b2 etc etc how far could it go b capital k not necessarily perhaps to any other value it should be discrete it has to be like that no not necessarily because i do not know what is being done inside really yeah yeah that, that that's the purpose of a source coder really okay there should be one to one mapping. So is that okay? Case, so then the bit treatment exactly. Yeah. That's a good question. Really. So what again we are mixing here is that that is a mix up. It's unfortunate a bit. So let's say I'm using eight bits to map the character. Right. Right. I'm using eight bits to map the character initially for the information source. Right. But my source code is giving me a six bit. Right. Result. Right. So but Okay, but uh, you are trying to say that this is the only possible form of source coding. I beg to differ. Yes, sir, but what I say is essentially must be one to one mapping. Not necessarily. It again depends on how I visualize. Let me again, uh, because the question is valid, I think you also will end up with the same confusion at some point of time, really. So I'm, I don't want to constrain this source coder. Let me. In fact, it was not necessary as I said that I have to bring in the notion of time one after another. But because it is coming in this example, let me also follow that for the timing for understanding only. For the general concept development, it was not necessary. What I say is that, okay, let there be a, I mean, x k number of inputs here, okay. With some, when you talk about information, when you learn about information, we will see that what uh, matters more is the average information or something like that basically, okay, which is an average parameter. And we will not lose any information in the process, but we will also not follow the scheme that you are specifying really in that form exactly. My point is that what I will do is that <coughs> the input bitrate here is greater, it is large, isn't it? The output bitrate in an equivalent term should be less. Yes. That is the job of the source coder. Yes. But for that, it is not necessary for me to visualize that only that k number of symbols have to be met, uh, mapped into k number of symbols. The scheme that you mentioned, a sample of 8 bits will be coded to by some source coder to a sample of as if 6 bits is only one form of doing source coding really, okay. What I can do is that if you are doing only that, well fine, you have got the same number of symbols at the output. But what I can do is that I can go for some other form of source coding, okay, such that I would like to say that my output possibilities are even less, certain number of, uh, less than this k number of possibilities, okay. And this is only a question of visualization basically, because I am not yet associating the corresponding rate, symbol rate. So, there is, like, there is no one-to-one -one mapping, that means two symbols from the, uh, from the initial sample, may, it may be, if you go for that kind of coding, how do you say that? Because for each block, there is a corresponding block in the receiver, for the source code, that there is a source decoder. information loss inside. So, no. Perhaps. Because it is not again clubbing to samples, not again, see to remove the rate business say just for the sake of visualization, suppose a sample of 8 bit I am taking and I am reducing it 
for one sample I am reducing it to 4 bits. <laughs> then if the source coder okay, out output is at the same rate just for the timing just try to follow then I can take 2 samples and can generate 1 sample of 8 bits at the output. Okay, no sacrifice in rate apparently, but what I am doing is that 2 samples I am clubbing and generating 1 sample of 8 bits, right. isn't it? Right. So I could club 2 samples conceptually, okay. so my output alphabet now, why should I define 256, in fact it does not go up to 256, okay, fine, but this rate is in terms of symbols, okay. how many symbols at the output per how many symbols, okay. when you convert it in bits per second or some other equivalent unit, absolute unit, you will find that there is an effective in rate in decrease over here, okay. Because the duration over which I received 2 samples over here, 2 symbols or 2 samples, I generated 1 sample, okay. So that way there is a reduction in time rate as well really, okay. My suggestion would be that for this basic, basic uh, discussion on statistical experiment, uh, do not try to include the time notion as far as possible. Okay, and the notion of time can be added any time really whenever it is necessary, fine. So in general and you also as a part of your exercise try to think of some general statistical experiments where uh, which can be viewed as a joint experiment, okay. And there again the two experiments, I mean uh, they may or may not have some kind of relationship, okay. May not have is a very specific case of two experiments having some relationship that can be again expressed mathematically and statistically. In fact, we say that no, two experiments are statistically independent. The statistical independence is one thing you have studied I believe, okay. So I can simply say yes, here is a joint experiment consisting of two experiments, but the experiments are statistically independent. That takes care of this isolated case. So in general, when I am trying to define, okay, I would like to go for minimum number of definition and I would like to remember those definitions, but and I would like to cover most of the things in a very accurate manner. So for that, let me say I am talking about a joint experiment consisting of two experiments. Now the physical situation that I am trying to model approximately, okay, if you go through that, if you observe that, you may tomorrow come out with a, discussion, a description saying that no sir, that physical experiment had three experiments really. So it may so happen that the physical phenomenon observing which I am describing a joint experiment with two experiments, you may describe that as three experiments is also possible, okay. But whatever it is, whenever we try to talk about more than one experiment, two or more number of experiments, we say that well this is a joint experiment, joint statistical experiment, okay. And then if it is possible to understand the individual experiments totally in terms of sample space, well I can define a sample space for experiment 1, I can define a sample space for experiment 2 separately, but again because I am taking an overall approach, I shall not go for individual description right at the beginning, I shall better go for a joint description of the sample space as well, okay. So just if I say that statistical experiment 1 and uh, the outcomes here were indicated as x size and the outcomes. Uh, sorry, the outcomes in general we use a small letter without any suffix to indicate an outcome, okay. And this small y indicates an outcome from the second experiment, okay. And then if I think about a joint sample space, can I write an expression for that? A sample space, okay, I will put in terms of bracket, within, okay, brace, and I would like to write the joint sample space. What I have to know is that the outcomes, how many outcomes are there? Let me indicate that there are uh, k out number of possible outcomes from first experiment and say capital J number of outcomes from the second part of the experiment, both are finite numbers. Then the possible outcomes from the first experiment are x1, x2, x3 up to x capital K the possible outcomes from the second experiments are y1, y2 up to y capital J, okay. Now can you write an expression for the joint sample space? The order pairs of x and y. Right, okay. So we can follow a notation here that well we write it as ordered pair, okay. So x1 first I put a comma in between y1, okay. I may like to separate them by semicolon, okay. And then and if I put a semicolon, I can do away with these brackets, first brackets or 
I may still continue with a comma and keep on continuing uh, uh, continue with the bracket really okay. Now one notation there are several notations available in several books really what I will prefer is doing away with these brackets because it requires more space really I will just separate the order pair by a semicolon okay. So x1 comma y1 is the first pair this is a possible outcome similarly x1 comma y2 again semicolon and like that there will be one member x1 comma y capital J and then it will be y2 x2 comma y1 and like that is not it. The last mem member in this sequence of writing would be x k comma y j fine. The number of elements can I say that each of this order each of this pair is what can I say that is an element is an outcome of the joint experiment okay okay is an element also over the joint experiment fine. So, each of them can be viewed as an element the way I defined some time back okay or possible alternatives as outcomes and now I can say that both of these are <coughs> see I can take out even both of these output at one place and I can observe this point saying that okay I get the outcomes here joint outcome fine. So, a joint outcome means one outcome from one part of the experiment another outcome from the other part of the experiment and tomorrow if I have to talk about a joint experiment over three or more number of experiments should not be a problem okay I can go on writing this. So, this may be one sample space okay. Now, if I want to uh, ask about the corresponding joint uh, ensemble joint ensemble I need the corresponding description of the probability joint probabilities is not it okay. The joint ensemble is one uh, I mean notation again is that is indicated like this two capital letters I said x and y okay this is as if experiment x this is experiment y okay. So, the joint ensemble encompasses both and hence to complete description of this joint ensemble joint sample space we have defined we have to define the joint probability measure okay is there any problem in defining joint probability measure. If I now say that well this is an outcome a joint outcome okay x1 comma y1 can you write a probability description for that okay should be possible okay because then we have to only talk about some kind of conditional probability is not it okay the probability of x probability that x1 is an outcome at the output and then the probability that y1 is an outcome given that x1 has occurred from the first part of the experiment okay. So, through a conditional probability and ultimately we can define a joint probability for x y 1 x 1 comma y 1 really okay. So, I can talk about probabilities like this probability x 1 comma y 1 I can talk about probabilities like x i comma y j i and j running up to k and capital J is not it. So, by conceiving the notion of joint probability and after defining the joint sample space I can define a joint ensemble okay and this approach I would say is a, a very general one okay because I can uh, consider this joint experiment as a single experiment even whenever I have got a situation which is very clearly a single statistical ex close to a single statistical experiment like the information source I can do that really with some little bit of little bit of thinking. Now, coming to this event, event not necessarily be the outcome of a statistical experiment. Give me an example. Suppose the statistical experiment is flipping of a coin, okay, flipping of a fair coin, we say, or fair toss of a coin, yes, okay. Uh, now, uh, define one event for this experiment. Yes, yeah, two consecutive heads. Okay, this implies that the experiment is uh, conducted twice. Okay, fine. Now see, I would not like to bring in any time notion. So first flipping would take some time, and then only the second flipping. Okay, suppose I describe the same thing by the same statistical model, saying that I had two fair coins. I toss one of them. I mean, both of them once. Statistically, both are equivalent situations, isn't it? So tossing one fair coin twice and two fair coins identical <laughs> identical fair coins once once each and doing it over no point of no period of time 
statistically mean the same experiment and I can visualize this uh, tossing twice of a single coin or tossing I mean once each of two fair coins as a joint experiment. Can I joint experiment where each experiment basic a component experiment was tossing of one fair tossing of a fair coins once is not it. So, you can see a very simple experiment when I observe for multiple outcomes I can visualize this as a joint experiment ok, but you will say no point sir in this case see tossing of one coin and the result is not going to affect the next experiment. So, they are statistically independent I say fine yes. So, this is a special case of a joint experiment where the outcomes are independent ok, but need not be really ok. I am coming to that here ok. Now see <coughs> the outcome as he said as an example is that two I mean that the probability of I mean the outcome is that there are two heads from the two outcomes really ok. I could also define the probability that uh, mm, well in this case uh, the outcomes are because it is a very simple binary experiment really I could not use the term of negative sense really. The probability I could say that probability ok it is possible really the probability that uh, uh, both of them are not heads both of them are not heads ok. I am interested in that issue that both of them are not heads you could tell me the probability of that ok. You could also tell me after conducting the experiment once whether the outcome was like that ok, but see the outcome the way I define ok, um, the, the point of interest that I am defining which I shall call as event really is that both the outcomes were not heads. Do you get me? Your outcomes are either head or tail fine, but I am defining something of my interest which is that both the outcomes are not head let me call this also as an event. You can tell me whether this event is true or false by seeing your outcomes, your outcomes were head or tail, one of them was outcome really. So, do you get me that my point of interest need not be exactly what is happening at the output of the experiment. I may define something of my interest really ok and it should be possible to answer to my question really and assign some probability also by observing those results. Okay, so, outcome specifically means uh, relates to the results or outputs if I may say so ok of the statistical experiment ok, but event is a more generic term more general term ok which may be any uh, point or anything of any logical combination of the outcomes ok. I am saying that ok subset of elements is somewhat uh, I mean the thing is that an event can be constructed considering the possible outcomes of a statistical experiment ok. So, we should not say that an event occurs at the output of statistical experiment that need not be true always really. An event may be more related to your intention of studying the experiment I think that is a closer description. An event is something ok which should be of interest to the observer and which can be understood which can be described by observing the output of the outcomes of the statistical experiments that way. So, there is a difference. Okay. So, now in terms of uh, this description one may say that ok an event can be constructed from the subsets of elements in a joint sample space is that ok. The elements in a joint sample space ok. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. Now, let me see yeah I have uh, So, an example of an event not a very exciting example really, <laughs> but just to uh, convey the uh, notion of joint ensemble is that in the joint ensemble x y that is the notation we will follow two capital letters. The event that x this small x without any suffix means this is an event ok, this is an event takes a particular value x k that is x is equal to x k and in this case I have defined the event which is a single observation of the outcome that the outcome is x k ok. This is the event now that x takes a particular value x k corresponds to the subset of this how can you if I ask over a joint experiment like that x and y how can I ask that ok the probability that uh, the event x equal to x k what is that? You can tell me about those that probability that small x is equal to the event specifically is small x is equal to x k 
is my point of interest. I want to know what is the probability that small x is equal to x k. That is the outcome of the first experiment assumes the value of x k. Okay. So, if that is my point of interest, then what you have to do is that you have to find first the subset wherein there is a possibility of small x k and then you may have to find the probability of occurrence of all those subsets. These elements in the subset, they are the joint elements in the sample space, okay, joint members of the sample space, fine. And then we have to find, we have to first identify this subset x k comma y 1 separated by a semicolon x k comma y 2 like that x k comma y 3 like that x k comma y capital J, okay. Fine, because the probability of small x equal to x, x k is dependent on all these factors, okay. And so, the probability of the event x equal to x k is probability of x k because my event somewhat unfortunately encompassed only the outcome of the first experiment. So, I can also write it as probability of x k and this is an outcome of the first experiment to indicate that sometimes we in put the capital letter or the ensemble uh, symbol capital X here. Probability of x k where x k is defined over the ensemble x capital X okay, is determined in terms of this joint probability, probability of x y, joint probability over the joint ensemble. Okay. So, one has to find out x k comma y j, okay, j running from 1 to capital J. Okay. So, if so give me an answer to my uh, even really one has to find this probability and then one can say that yes, that is the probability of the outcome of the first experiment being equal to x of k. Okay. So, this is one example of an event. Okay. We uh, loosely understood that in order to define a joint ensemble, we have to define the joint probability measure. Okay, if it comes to that really and towards that it may be good to understand what is known as the conditional probability. Please go through this and tell me whether this expression for conditional probability is okay. Hmm? okay. So, I am trying to define a conditional probability over a joint sample space, over a joint sample space. Okay probability that I am writing an expression for the probability that the outcome of the second experiment capital Y okay, is Y j okay, given that the outcome of the first experiment that is capital X okay, is X k. In this case one notation, one form of notation is that I write the probability as probability of Y given X, okay, then it is the probability that Y j has occurred after knowing that x k has occurred from the first experiment. Okay. And this is the probability that y equal to y j is occurring at the output of the second experiment when x equal to x k has is already known to occur from the first experiment. Okay. This is the joint probability that okay, x k occurs from the first experiment and y j occurs from the second experiment divided by the probability that x k occurs in the first experiment. Okay. Obvious uh, limitation here is that probability of x k has to be greater than 0 that we have already excluded for our discussion. Okay. We will not consider any probability which is 0 really. <coughs> and it is simple to see that when we say two, a, a, the two constituent experiments in a joint experiment in a joint uh, statistical experiment are independent. When do we say that? We say that the joint probability when they can be expressed as the product of the individual probabilities. I hope you follow this notation, this notation as well as this notation, okay. x k defined over experiment x, y j defined over experiment y and x k comma y j, okay, is defined over x y joint ensemble, joint experiment, okay, and their joint probability. When the joint probability can be expressed as the product of the individual probabilities and this is valid for for all j and all k, there is a very important restriction. Do not ever find that if for a particular j k pair, 
this condition is valid and hence the experiment is uh, independent is a wrong conclusion really. So to really ensure that two experiments are statistically independent one has to see that this is valid for all values of j and k. There may be per some kind of dependence in a specific manner which may not be reflected for a specific value of k and j but that is not the point. If they are dependent to some extent their experiments are dependent. Okay. So for all j and k if this is valid we say the two experiments are independent and in this case what happens to this conditional probability value? Simply the probability that y equal to yk when we know that x equal to xk has occurred the previous knowledge that y x equal to xk is of no use okay, because they are independent and hence this conditional probability reduces to this probability of only occurrence of y equal to yj. Okay. <coughs> Now, we are uh, more or less ready to uh, define what is information. Okay. Today, uh, because of time limitation, uh, I am giving you, I am uh, coming to a simpler definition of information, but I would like to bring in the notion of information through a joint experiment. Okay. So, we will take it up uh, through what is known as first of all, I mean mutual information over a joint experiment and we would see that the usual sense of information over a single statistical experiment is a special case again for that really. Okay. But that is for later really. Let me briefly tell you that what is the uh, quantification of information that is normally followed. The information that we are trying to talk about in this context is not the information in its full term. Okay. The information is only restricted to its notion in digital communication theory. Though a similar kind of definition can be used in certain other fields of engineering. Okay. But here information means information in a digital communication system. Okay. So with that, sorry, one way of writing the information is that the amount of information the issue is to quantify gained after observing an event x equal to xk. Okay. That means we are now talking about a single experiment, a single experiment x whose outcome I am labeling as small x and that x assumes the value of xk. xk is a letter of the alphabet okay. x1, x2, xk up to x capital K. From that alphabet the probability that small x is equal to xk for that single experiment whose probability is p of k if the probability is p of k for x of k then the information associated with that event x equal to x k is indicated as log of 1 upon p of k. So the information associated with an event x equal to x k okay, is nothing but log of 1 upon the probability. So we can talk about a statistical experiment okay, and once the ensemble is defined okay, the probability assignment is, has, is also done each element or each letter of the alphabet is defined and it has its associated probability. In this case I can define, I can say that well that particular event x equal to xk has an information which is log of 1 upon pk. Okay. The base, usual base we uh, prefer is 2. Okay. And when you use this base of 2, the corresponding unit of information is bit, b i t. Okay. B, yeah. You can pardon. You can use any base. Okay. Right. You can. You can. You can use any base, but that does not help really because we are not going to retain the same alphabet size after some information processing. So when you process information, we may like to restructure, get different kinds of alphabets really. So choosing a base equal to the number of alphabet does not help always though it would simplify the situation in some cases. Okay. So it is good to use a universal unit, universal unit so that everybody uses that. So 2 is one popular choice in which case the information unit is bit, do not ever confuse it as binary digit. It is a separate uh, definition BIT. Some people prefer using a base of E and in that case the unit is called as NAT. Why? because it is natural logarithm okay, nat. So from now on whenever we uh, mention about information we will say it is either so many bits or nats. Okay. They are uh, definitely related 
for our discussion we will follow the unit of bit in most of the books also nowadays we follow this so unit of bit. bit pardon yes, we have in the, normal the usual bit uh, that you have been using so far stands for binary digit hmm. that is a short acronym really okay here for here there is no notion of binary so far but this is simply because the simply because the base has been chosen as 2 but it does not if uh, we have yes yes the probability is half it can be related simply because if we again think back it's almost time today really i mean it's if you think back to our information source and consider a very simple source of two letters okay zero or one if that is the alphabet now imagine a random source okay with the outcomes of zero or one you are comfortable with your digital ttl etc okay zero and one and usually what is the probability of occurrence of 0 if I ask you? 50%. Same fraction, so half. So usually the probability of 0 is half, the probability of 1 is also half, is not it? They are equally probable we say, fine. So in that case, now if you quickly try to compute following our base of 2, the amount of information associated with 0 which is 1 bit, 1 bit one, again. One bit. So 0 which is 1 digital bit also conveys an information which is 1 bit, so it goes well. So that is one reason why we have preferred the unit of bit, okay, but it is only up to that point really. We will find that we may talk about an alphabet of many uh, symbols really and would still call the unit of in the information in bits, though we will not talk about only 0 and 1, only over there, okay. Any question at this point? Yeah, yeah, I will start with that uh, slide perhaps in the next one. So he, today just note down that and definition of information, this is definition, okay, for this single experiment case is log of 1 upon p k with an agreed base of 2 and the unit is bit in that case, okay. There are reasons why this uh, unit is good and this expression is good, I have listed a few, I think I will start from that point onwards. Any other question? First class, tomorrow, first class tomorrow we will have here.